all of human history, people didn't have shoes on, right? You didn't come out of the womb with some shoes on, dude. You probably should get out of your house and go touch some grass. Rohan told me, he said, you formed terrible, bro. You know the hokas? Those things are so clunky, bro. They focus, like I said, on good food, good health, connecting with the earth, and like each other. What is grounding? Why would you do grounding? Like, what's the purpose? Grounding, also called earthing. I think it's a concept that uh, not a lot of people know of. They might like understand it once someone partially explains it to them. Grounding is basically putting your bare feet or bare, fan bare hands right onto planet Earth and absorbing that electrical charge that the Earth gives off. But that's as simple as anybody can explain it is grounding is putting your bare feet, bare hands, your body really, if you were laying down on the earth too, uh, is grounding. Or if you went swimming in the ocean, that's also grounding, but we can get into that. Um, but the, the best way to explain it is bare feet on planet earth. So it sounds like it's uh, just connecting to the earth. It's connecting your body to the earth in one way or another. Like you said, it could be your feet, your hands. It could be, you even mentioned swimming there. So it's like connecting to the earth one way or another. Yeah, connecting to the earth. There's a transfer of free electrons that happens when you're connected to the earth with your feet or if you're swimming in the ocean. Uh, earth has this negative charge, I believe. Yeah, a negative electric charge uh, that it gives off. So when you're connected directly to it, uh, you're receiving this negative charge. And there are some benefits that studies have shown What's the purpose of the electrical charge? So you're saying there's a negative charge and then the electrons flow up through you. What's What good does that do for you? So one of the benefits uh, to grounding was really cool. It was this blood measurements they took in a group of participants. And what they did was they took blood measurements before they grounded and they took blood measurements after they grounded, right? So before they grounded, they looked at the blood under a microscope and saw how clumped up the blood was, the red blood cells, red blood cell clumping. And then after the uh, grounding was done, they looked at the blood and the blood was more fluid. The, the blood cells weren't uh, as clumpy as they were previously before the grounding. Viscosity? Viscosity. You can also look at like blood pressure then, like high blood pressure, like the way your blood is flowing throughout your body. From that study, you could assume that you're gonna get reduced blood pressure, right? you're gonna have improved blood circulation. And both of those I know are huge. Yeah, and that's like, that's like it has to do with that negative electrical charge that the earth gives off. That's what scientists theorize is one of the benefits. And then one of the benefits of that electrical charge coming through the body through grounding is uh, a reduction in blood pressure, reduction in inflammation, stuff like that, which is really, really huge. Well, you have to think that like for all of general like human history people didn't have shoes on right like people would just walk around barefoot there was no shoes until i i wondered the first year that shoes were even started i mean right yeah. like a thousand years i don't know i couldn't put an exact date on it i know when they originally made shoes they were just taking small little sandals take little leather straps make some little sandals being barefoot is natural for the human Humans weren't born with shoes on. You didn't come out of the womb with some shoes on, dude. No, nobody came out of the womb with shoes on. And the, exactly. So you'd think the human body is designed with the purpose, right? Like everything is intentional. There is not a thing in the human body that is not made with intention. I would assume that there's got to be some sort of intention behind the creation of animals and the earth and the way you're supposed to be connected. And it's not to say that like, humans need to be barefoot and if you step off of the earth and disconnect yourself you're gonna melt and burn but at the same time like the, the opposite is true you probably should get out of your house and go touch some grass right and not with shoes with your with your bare feet i mean it's not that hard but whether it's your bare feet you're grabbing a tree i don't care what it is like just connect with the earth in one way or another that's so huge and missing in society so bad when do you ever see that message passed connect with the earth that's rare you have to be on some subset niche of instagram or tiktok or whatever on youtube yeah well think of the average uh human nowadays you wake up in your house you have a you have a roof over your head which is very nice i am not i'm not trying to diss that but and I, I love having a roof over my head but you wake up you have a roof over your head 
you're in your house, so you're not technically grounding. You're not touching the earth. You're in your house. You may have no shoes on in your house, which is a good thing, but you're not directly touching the earth. Nowadays, you think about it, nobody is going outside and spending, let's say, even 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes touching the earth with their hands, their feet. They're going swimming. No one's going swimming. No. The time nowadays where people are are barefoot and touching earth with their feet, their hands, their body is significantly different than it was 100 years ago, let's say. Yeah. And I think, you know, the more I think about that, like you're talking about connecting and then your neurons, um, you're saying it has effects on your blood, but I could theorize that I think that would have strong effects on the brain as well, right? Because you think about it like this, you're talking about electricity, energy charge, you have electricity through your whole body of neurons, right? They're going up, it's going up towards your brain through your nervous system, right? Mm -hmm. Because your whole nervous system is an electrical charge and then that's gonna affect the brain and the mind. And then you're, you're going to have some sort of benefits there. So are there any like benefits you can speak on on that? I, I think the biggest benefit, anyone that has grounded before or been barefoot outside is just, I feel good. Yeah. I feel great. Yeah. You mentally feel great. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. You might just feel great because you're outside and you're seeing sun. You're getting fresh air. That could be the reason why you're feeling great, but it still is having an effect on your brain. You're feeling good in your mind which in effect is just you're going to feel good for most of the day, if not all the day, right? Definitely. I know it helps me. I know when I'm just feeling like garbage, you know, I'm like sitting in here and we have the heat going and it, I get a little headache or something. I feel stuffed up. I just feel like I haven't gotten outside. I need some fresh air. Like to go outside, take off the shoes and just get outside and walk around feels feels absolutely great. Even if it's just for five minutes, it could just be, five, especially in the cold now, it could just be a minute. If it's out in the cold, but it honestly, just feels good. Like it just feels good to the body. I don't know. Maybe it's uh, your adrenaline going up. I'm not sure, but it feels great. One thing I I think we can talk about now is the foot reflexology. I think that's very interesting. How that like is influencing how we feel, uh, the benefits to the brain, uh, stuff like that. Because that chart is very interesting. We can pop it up on the screen right now. I've seen it posted many times on the internet on you know instagram twitter or x they talk about it and they talk about being barefoot and grounding and why that's so crucial to your health and in this chart uh let's look at it for example they look at the bottom of the foot and they associate the big toe with your head and brain they associate the middle of your big toe with your pituitary gland in your brain and then all these other parts of the foot so if we go down the foot a little bit, the middle of the foot is associated with your stomach. Uh, kidneys are down there, small intestines, bladder. Is this just based on the nervous system? So your nervous system that connects to your feet and then how that like kind of connects through the body? So like you said earlier, yeah, your nervous system extends throughout your whole body. So your nervous system touches every single part of your body. That's why if you put your hand on a hot stove, you're like, ow. Yeah. That hurts. Exactly. And that's a direct uh, touch to mind like connection um, that, you know, your ner nervous system is intact and working because your hand touches the hot surface. It's like, oh, that's, that's not right. A lot of people think that, you know, the brain is they really just think about the skull. That's something Elliot Hulse really touched on, who's like an old influencer I used to watch when I was younger. Um, I don't really know what he's up to nowadays, but... When I was younger, he'd always emphasize the feet and he emphasized that the brain was the whole body. Like people are really trapped up in the idea that uh, the brain's up here, the brain's up here. All the thinking happens up here. The thinking does not all happen up here. Sure, that's the powerhouse. Sure, that's the processor. But the reality is it's going throughout the whole body. And then that's why he would relate um, the feet to all the other issues throughout the body. Why, uh, you know, a sore neck could literally come from your feet the feet are the foundation of the body and then it stems up into the ankle it stems up into the calf or like the knee right which stems up into the hips and then that stems up into the back and the spine and then it goes up into the shoulders into the neck bang you have a neck issue and people are just looking at the neck they're looking at the neck they're, they're just they're isolated on it with a magnifying glass and it's like you need to start down there at the foundation just like you would anything and then go up yeah that's a good point and feet are the foundation of the body feet in each foot, you have 125 muscles. 
And by wearing the shoe every day, you're kind of holding yourself back on your potential and your health potential. Uh, basically, if you're wearing a shoe all day, it's kind of like it's kind of like wearing a cast. You're you're not using every muscle. You're only using certain muscles. You get used to only using certain muscles, and then other problems uh, are procreated. People always wonder what, why my neck's hurting. Why is my shoulder hurting? Why is my back hurting? Like you touched on earlier. And it really can just be fixed by maybe not wearing your shoes so much, going outside, touching earth. Yeah, it could it could definitely be part of the solution. And that's the issue is that people aren't even like taking into account that it could be a solution. They're so isolated in their problem solving, have these eyes that just won't move. And they, they got to realize like pe- things are really complex. And when things are really complex, it, the best idea is to just go to the beginning and just track upwards. I mean, when, when you lose something, when you lose an item, what do you do? You go back to where you knew, know you last had it, the foundation, and then you go from there. Because it's complex. You went to point A, point B, then to point C, D, back to A, and then you went back to C. You went all over the place. So it's it's the same thing with the, with the feet. And yeah, they are the foundation, 125 muscles in each. I agree entirely with the cast analogy. It is a cast. A cast makes your muscles weak. I get it's to repair, to provide structure. There's purpose, just like there could be purpose to shoes. But on the other hand, you would never leave a cast on for too long. No. Your muscle will quite literally like be gone. And um, that's that's a perfect example. An- another example I could relate to would be a Smith machine. Shoes are definitely like a Smith machine. You Smith machine has its purpose for when somebody needs it, whether they're partially injured, of older age, whatever the case may be. But the average person, especially people that's going to be our audience, like young men, it's you should be uh, not never never step foot in the Smith machine. What are you what are you doing? That is that is taking away from all the structural muscles and all the foundational muscles that need to be strengthened and used, and it has supports provided. We need to remove the supports. And we need to just, you know, strengthen ourselves. Yeah, I, I think foundation is such a cool word because you think of a building, right? Let's talk about a skyscraper. You have a skyscraper. You're not starting at the top and building down. You're you're building the foundation. They're digging deep into the into the the ground, like to make basement, whatever, to build that structure to make sure that tall sky, skyscraper does not fall down. Right? Look at it this way: if you're wearing a shoe most of the day, if not all the day, for weeks upon weeks. And we just said you have 125 muscles in each foot. The shoe is not letting you use maybe most of those muscles um, like they should be used. I think the best way to think about this is if you're building that skyscraper, say you forget to put a few beams in the middle or something, you can build that skyscraper and it'll be fine, but eventually something's gonna go wrong. Something's gonna give one day. It could take a. It could take twenty, thirty years, fifty years. Something's gonna give, and there'll be issues. Just like if you're wearing shoes all the time, you're not using these muscles like they should be used. They're not used to being used. Eventually, you're gonna have some neck pain. You're gonna have some back pain. Something's got to give eventually somewhere. And you're gonna think, why do I have this pain? Yeah. It's because shoes are not meant to be worn on the foot. For as much as we wear them and your feet are the foundation of the body yeah i think people just overdo things people are straying away from what it was natural how we're meant to be and they're having these you know alternative lifestyles and alternative things they do that, that's a that's a really good analogy skyscraper something's got to give eventually yeah Something's got to give eventually. Whether you're going to experience, yeah, you're going to experience one other part's going to start dipping down and some structural engineer's going to have to take a look at it one day and just be like, wow, that is not looking good. And the same thing applies to humans. You have a doctor look at you one day under an x-ray machine. He's like, wow, your bones are out of whack. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah, then they then they refer you to a chiropractor. You need to get adjusted which is a whole other thing. I don't like chiro- chiropractors. <laughs> yeah, chiropractors are uh, are interesting. Uh, I don't know. With the foot re- reflexology, let's bounce back there for a second because there's some. I brought something I wanted to show. I forgot to show it. So for the foot reflexology, let's see if we can put this on the camera. We'll zoom that in. Check this out. This little uh, ball. This is very spiky. Here, check this out. 
Yeah. yeah, so what do you do with this? So you just put it on the ground and you just roll on it and it's a little massager. Like you roll it on your on the bottom of your foot? Yeah, yeah. You you put it actually on the ground and just roll your foot on top. And ideally, up. ideally you stand fully up. It, it doesn't matter. You could sit. It, it's the amount of pressure that's going to be applied. But after a workout or anything, that thing's insane. But with the foot reflexology, like that, that that's hitting all those different parts, and that's really interesting because yeah, we just talked about the foot reflexology chart. You have a lot of different pressure points on the bottom of your foot, and when you're using that ball, like rolling that ball underneath your foot, you're touching a lot of those pressure points. No doubt, you're touching all that. You can purposely hone in on certain pressure points. Yeah, you could you could keep it towards the top of the foot, address that area, and if you look at the foot reflexology chart. Uh, if you're really big into that and believe in that, which I, I think there's some basis to it, uh, the top of the foot, you're you're hitting your head, uh, neck, so basically the upper half of your body. The top of the foot is associated with your upper half of the body. Toe yoga is something I discovered, I don't know how long ago, maybe it was last summer. So toe yoga, I found it last summer. Someone was talking about it online. And I was like, hmm, that's really interesting. You know, it may have been Peter Tia that I discovered it from. But I actually guaranteed it was Peter Tia that I discovered it from. I was reading out live. It's a great little routine you can do that's really going to help stretch your feet, strengthen your feet, and just like overall, you know, like just feel good, right? Like my, it, makes, it makes the feet feel good. They crack. Oh, my God. But so the first thing that I do is, I, you know, just spread the toes, like general spreading of the toes, get them as spread as much as possible, bend them back and forth, right? Then what I do is... It, you go walk around barefoot and you want to spread them and then raise on them like a calf raise. Mm. And that's really good to like in terms of strengthening your toes while you're also spreading them. And then the next step I do after that, after maybe 10 reps of that or whatever, you can do whatever you want. You walk around on the calf raise with the spread toes and that feels really good. And then I'll do after that, I try to individually lower and raise each toe. That's ridiculously hard to do. That is for advanced grounding. How do you even do that? Individually raise each toe. I can only raise my big toe. <laughs> if your nervous system's really on point, I assume that you have pretty good, like you have pretty good flat. You're pretty in touch with your feet, right? So maybe not the pinky, right? Like that's a little bit more out of touch, but your other toes you get more in touch with. Me, it's the big toe and then the second toe. I can almost do it past that. No way, but I can't even really spread my toes that well, I mean, compared to some of the stuff I see. Like, there's that picture of a, there's like a Rogan podcast, and I know there's like a, pot, there was like a Reels or a TikTok that went around, and it shows the picture of like, your feet should look like your hand. And I mean, maybe not as spread out as your hand, but it should also be fairly spread out, like how our hands are. But they're they're really tight and just closed in. And I made a little, you know, shorts about that, how they were just tight and closed in. It's like having a, a mitten on your hand all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing as if you had a mitten all the time and you were just trapping your fingers. Fingers will get used to being in that position. You wouldn't be able to even spread them or do anything. You would lose all the... That's interesting. So, you like, the picture was you want to have your feet, your toes, look like your hands. Like, not, like, exactly, but, like... Like you want to be able to like spread your toes pretty yeah. pretty wide. The picture is like a tribal guy with who you know they don't ever wear shoes, and he was showing his feet, and his feet could spread open like a web. And that's how you have people like that guy that we watched on uh, I showed you on Instagram, the Tarzan guy. Oh yeah, he climbs trees. <laughs> yeah, so he his feet probably are super webbed, and so they're really strong. And then that's where the toe yoga comes in with the spreading your toes, so getting them like webbed. And then walking on it. And it really helps um, provide strength while you have the web and working on that. Working on strengthening the 125 muscles you have in each foot. Yeah, that's really interesting. So so toe yoga is a good way to, you know, really activate your toes and strengthen them. What about like rolling your ankle? Like is that also considered like toe yoga in a way? Like I know it's not your toes, but it's still like your foot. I it they were calling it toe yoga, but to be honest, I'd just call it foot yoga. Foot stretching routine could be alternatives, and I would include ankle rolling. I would include anything that's just gonna um, stretch the whole region. You know, anything really below the knee, right? Well, not the calf, right? That's a whole muscle, but anything below the calf, so yeah, ankle, foot, toes. But it is mainly focused on toes, and I know a lot of people use the toe spreaders as well. 
Yeah, I've seen that. Well, those are actually for painting your nails and letting them dry. But people go and buy them to spread their toes now. And I really, for a little while, I was trying to get them. I forgot about it, I think, or something. I need to go pick up a pair because I, I do want to put it in. Like, while I'm playing video games or something or maybe editing the podcast or whatever, I should be at least spreading my toes and letting them. I have the funniest story about that, about this, like, t- these toe spreader things. Yeah. So last year I went to uh, Crunch. You know how, like, they have, like, the turf area where people stretch? That's where, like, you push the sleds and stuff. Like, So in that area, I'm sitting over there stretching and this guy walks out of the locker room and he has like these like toe spreaders in his toes. And this dude's wearing no shoes in the gym. Oh, yeah. Walks out of the locker room wearing no shoes. Wait, so he didn't even have socks on? No socks, just barefoot, like literally barefoot in a, a public gym, which is like, I don't know if someone probably said something to him, but uh, I was really surprised to see it. He walks out into the uh, the turf area and he has these like toe, like the, the toe spreaders in his toes. He's just walking around on, on the turf area, and then he starts like doing like these stretches, and I don't know what he was doing. I don't know if he was lifting that day or he was just walking, like spreading his toes. It was really funny. A public gym. This guy had these, he had these uh, these toe spreaders, and it was hilarious. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing at a in a public setting. I should say that's ridiculous. I <laughs> that's funny. So that's that actually opens up our next point that I wanted to get into was uh like working out barefoot and like walking barefoot and stuff so we talked about grounding like going outside touching the earth connecting but in terms of like so we're touching up on toe yoga next would be like working out going on walks and those two things will really provide you with strengthening the feet and getting that foundational strength um so the rest of the body is intact right how we started out with was just the walking right yeah, dude, we would go on like 20 minute, 30 minute walks, no shoes, like leave the house, no shoes, or you can leave the house and then like put your shoes in your front yard or, or something, but make sure you're in an area where no one steals your shoes. One time I got my shoes stolen. <laughs> yeah, <I was> <laughs> <laughs> that, that has to be like the, one of the worst things ever is to get your shoes stolen. Yeah. That happened to Zach. Wait, so you got your shoes stolen or he did? And Zach got his shoes stolen from in Kennedy, yeah, in middle school, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, he got he got them ripped out the gym locker room. People would just steal them out the lockers. There's no locks, right? Like, oh, yeah. People just put their stuff in there, and then they go out for gym. So I got a story about someone stealing shoes to share real quick. We were in New York in October, and we were in this apartment building in Manhattan, and we all take our shoes off because New York's dirty, right? You don't want to wear your shoes into your apartment and like dirty your apartment up. So we, we go into this apartment where we're like about to go out for the night. And uh, so we leave our shoes out in the apartment hallway. And there must have been like 15 pairs of shoes in the hallway, right? So like we go to leave, we, we go to go out for the night and everybody's shoes are there except for Zane's. Somebody stole Zane's shoes and they were just gone. So he had no shoes. There was no, like, he, he didn't have any shoes. Luckily, he had a pair of shoes at his brother's place where he was staying. He had to... Uh, he had an Uber back to his brother's place with no shoes on it in New York City. No shoes. And go get another pair of shoes. <laughs> so funny. That's too good. It was so funny. Hilarious. Yeah. He's in the Uber barefoot. It's a barefoot legend. But so we had the walks and we would go out and go for a walk for like 20, 30 minutes, right? And just go barefoot. And um, that would feel great. And then the other method I would do is, and I still am doing this because now in the winter, right? Like I can't go on the barefoot walks. Like we live in Michigan. So I t- do, I go in the gym and I, I'm not barefoot like that guy was. I do have socks on, but I take my shoes off and I have socks on. Maybe I'll add the toe spacers next time under the socks. So I have my socks on and I do all my workout with just, just bare feet. And I've honestly been doing that since the summer now. And it feels great. Like, I don't think I could work out again with shoes. Like, doing the squat barefoot feels great. Doing um, box jumps with no shoes feels great. All of it feels great. And the thing is, I actually learned um, lifting barefoot. I didn't learn lifting with shoes on. I, li- I lifted in my backyard with a barbell and weights. So, I was just in my garage. I didn't put shoes on. Yeah, why would you wear shoes at home? No, I didn't. I, I didn't even think about putting shoes on. It was just natural for me to go out barefoot because I. It was the summertime, right? Like you don't ever wear shoes. That's now I'm back to my roots, and I love it. Like it feels great. 
never wearing shoes again. So you go to a nice gym. At my gym, I had my shoes off one time, and they told me to put my shoes back on. They told me to put my shoes back on. I wasn't even doing anything egregious. I had my socks on and everything. But this other guy, they don't tell him to put his shoes on. But no, that's nice, uh, being able to lift with no shoes. Um, squatting. So what do you do? Like, what do you, anything and everything at the gym with yeah, no shoes? Anything and everything with no shoes. But the best stuff is the leg stuff, right? Like a bench press, whatever. Like shoes, no shoes. It's yeah, it doesn't really matter. But when you're talking about squats, lunges, box jumps. Box jumps is really interesting yeah. with no shoes. Yeah, All of that is really good with no shoes. I like to do boxing as well because there's a little uh, boxing bag in the turf area. So I'll take my shoes off for that and that feels great. No shoes, right? Like you're always on the tips of your toes and you constantly have to be moving and shifting left and right. Hold on. That's a great point. So think about the UFC. They're not wearing shoes when they're fighting in the octagon. They're wearing no shoes. They might they might have their like ankles taped up. I don't think they, I don't think they do. They'll tape up their feet for support for the bones, and it's just to support the bones so they don't break as easy. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. So street fighting, no shoes. Yeah. No. So yeah, definitely wouldn't want to wear the shoes when you're boxing, and it feels great on the feet after. And then I'll go in the sauna, and then that's where I do the toe yoga. So in the sauna, now I can I just worked out on my feet and I really was strengthening them and then I can um, stretch them and it feels great in there. Yeah, I see people all the time wearing shoes in the sauna and to each their own. I I'm not judging, but I personally don't wear shoes in there just because you know we're getting up there towards 200 degrees. Like I don't need shoes. I want to be in there uh, in just a towel basically. I don't want to have anything on. But sauna is a perfect place to to do some toe yoga. Yeah. Cause like we go into the sauna for what, you know, 15, 20 minutes, you know, that's the perfect amount of time just to sit there. You gotta do something. We don't bring our phones in the sauna. So you gotta do something while you're in the sauna. And uh, toe yoga is perfect. You know, you can sit there, you can spread the toes, do some foot exercises, roll the ankles. You do a lot with the, the lower foot uh, toe area now that I think about it. And I remember I learned uh, the toe or not the toe yoga. Well, I learned the toe yoga from Peter Atia, but he also talks a lot in Outlive about working out barefoot. So he shows pictures of him squatting and stuff, and he used to squat with shoes on, and he used to do really incorrect form with a lot of weight, and he realized that he was just damaging himself. So he uh, has the pictures of him taking his shoes off, and then he's squatting barefoot, and um, he really worked on it. No weight, deloaded it entirely. Maybe. Yeah, it was just a bar, I think. And he was just really working on getting deep squats, perfectly level. And because, dude, he had a terrible tip to the right. He had a before and after picture, and it was terrible. But I think taking off the shoes and having no support and then just really honing in on form really helped him improve. Dude, it was, it took me till last year to, because I used to squat with shoes on. And my form, I needed to have someone there with me to look at my form to tell me, hey, that's not right. And it was Rohan. He told me, he said, take your shoes off, you know, flat. Because people wear, we talked about it, people wear, you know, flat shoes at the gym to get that that barefoot effect. Yeah, they go wear a Converse or they wear Vans to actually have the flat barefoot effect. Yeah, they even have, like, specific lifting shoes you can buy, like, for, like, squatting or deadlifting or, or something, whatever. But, yeah, so I was I was squatting at the gym and uh, Rohan told me, he said, your form's terrible, bro. <laughs> And uh, I was like, okay. Um, and he said, take your shoes off. So I took my shoes off and started squatting. And right away, I can just say, like, I noticeably was like, this just feels way better. It feels more natural, you know, like wearing no shoes and lifting. Like, obviously, make sure you're doing it safe. Like, right. Like, don't be in a situation where you want to drop like weights on your foot. But, you know, I took the shoes off, started squatting, and you're more, you're more level. Like, Talk about foundation. You have a better foundation. You're activating uh, more of those muscles in the foot. You're not relying on that shoe, the the base of that shoe to give you the support. You're activating those muscles, 125 muscles in each foot. Some shoes even have ankle support, right? Yeah. So Look at those, uh, you know, the hokas. Yeah. Those things are so clunky, bro. <laughs> yeah, I could never run with those. <laughs> those things are so... I, people love them. Yeah. I, I don't know. I... I, uh, Rohan has a pair. Yeah. 
He says they're really comfortable. I'm sure they are. I'm sure you feel like you're bouncing around. You're fo- you're, you're floating on top of the world with those on. <laughs> those are space jams or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see LeBron James wearing some hocus, dude. Oh my God, LeBron oh James. Oh my God. <laughs> LeBron, dude. LeBron, if you see this, wear some hokas. The world will love it. I would love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'd be too funny. Yeah, uh, that's so funny. LeBron with some hokas. Yeah, no, we could talk about some other shoes though. So you have, uh, oh, actually no. Before we talk about shoes, I wanted to know that clip that I showed you earlier. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a good. Yeah, clip. that clip of the guy squatting barefoot, and he was just squatting on um. Like a, it was a platform, like one of those wooden platforms, and it looks really new. <laughs> yeah, it's Quite. like a wooden wooden platform. It's all shiny, like it's waxed <laughs> yeah, up, yeah. you know. <laughs> this guy. I'm thinking about the video in my head. This moron, dude. Man. It was so funny. So it's so slippery, and he goes to squat barefoot, and his knee just gives in, and he just crashes on the ground. And I it, shouldn't be laughing. It's not uh, funny. No, he's all right. Well. It's kind of funny, but it's also not funny because, yeah, he, he may have got pretty hurt from so, that. So, hold on. So, he posts this video and says, don't lift barefoot, right? Yeah. That, that, was, the, that was the purpose yeah. of this video. So, this wasn't just a comedy video, the, which is what I'm laughing about. This guy, the guy who posted it was, well, the guy who posted the original video was probably for comedy because they were recording the friends, right? And then some guy reposted that video and was talking about barefoot squatting's dumb barefoot squatting you should never do it and how it's so dangerous and really put shoes on and i thought it was the most ridiculous take ever like because you saw one video of somebody getting hurt now we're gonna pass in all caps don't ever squat barefoot that is the same thing as saying don't don't ever drive a car because you saw a car crash today. <laughs> yeah that is ridiculous i saw i, I heard a plane crashed like a, a couple weeks ago and I, I'm still going to go on a plane the next no, time bro. I need to go travel to Florida. Never fly again. Yeah, apparently not. Don't ever fly again. Yeah, I don't know. You could literally apply that to anything. Like, I could ride a bike with no helmet and fall and hit my head. Don't ride bikes, bro. It's not safe. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> you, that's the thing. You have to take the proper safety like measures when you're doing something, especially lifting. You know, like you're lifting heavy weight. Like, it's dangerous to begin with. Yeah. Like, like you shouldn't be lifting heavy weight like if you can't lift that much let alone do it like not safe yeah that was the first thing he looked like he was squatting too much for his own good second thing is like don't go on some slippery surface lifting i get lift barefoot but if it looks really slippery don't load yourself with too much weight that you can't even handle to begin with and then put yourself in the slippery surface and yeah it was just ridiculous i think it's it's about safety and that's what i wanted to get into next that's kind of why i mentioned the clip was because I want to get into the safety of it. So when you are walking, lifting barefoot, anything, like when you don't have your shoes on, you really need to be pay attention in terms of safety because, like we said, the feet are the foundation of the body. We don't want to hurt them now. We're taking them off to strengthen them, not to hurt them. So don't do things like what we just showed. Um, also, don't drop weights on your feet. I've witnessed that. Um, when I, I told you I learned to lift in my garage, so Zach, my friend Zach, he did drop a 25 pound, uh, pound, 25 pound weight on his foot, and he had a purple toe the whole entire summer. <laughs> Doesn't so, sound good. Yeah, that's not good. And then with walking, in terms of like you're not in the gym, this could also apply to the gym. But make sure what you're walking on, you know what's on the ground. If there might be broken broken glass, I don't care about the foundation of your feet or anything. You need to protect them, so put on some shoes. Hundred percent. Uh, for example, I lived in Ann Arbor last year. You know, it's a college town. People break beer bottles. It happens. Uh, I was playing football in my front yard, and I had my rubber Burks on. I was wearing shoes because it's not the safest. And because uh, you never know, you know where you are. You got always got to make sure it's a safe area. But we were playing football, and uh, I was running a route, and uh, there was glass, and I stepped on it, and then went through my rubber Burke. And it just pierced the bottom of my foot. And I was wearing shoes, let alone. Like, I was wearing Berks. You know, they weren't the best shoes, I guess, to wear. But it pierced the bottom of my foot. And it was a noticeable, like, uh, pain every time I walked, like, the next day or two. Right? So, you know, got to make sure it's a safe area. You know, don't take your shoes off in, like, a city, I'll, I'll say. Like, don't be in a city and take your shoes off and think, oh, I'm doing good by grounding. There could be glass, needles, there could be anything, sharp rocks on the ground, anything. 
like you never know like in the city i'd say a better place to to go barefoot to do some grounding is go to like a park or like a forest or something where there's trails yeah that's, that's probably usually safer trails are always um pretty safe and then your backyard front yard is the obvious answer yeah you, you know what goes on in your backyard your front yard you know if you cut the lawn you know it should be pretty safe yeah we go down our street um we live in a you know there's not going to be stuff broken in, in our neighborhood so i know my neighborhood's safe like where you lived in ann arbor not as safe to just go walk around the neighborhood like that so you really just gotta watch out you know don't yeah. don't do anything stupid yeah one more way to go barefoot or ground is actually going to the beach you know you can go to the beach like if you live in a warm area i should say like you know up here in the midwest in michigan it's not the warmest out it's like zero degrees right now but if you live in a warm area or if it's the summer you go to the beach you can uh walk on the sand the sand is also the earth you know so you'll be on the sand and um go swimming you know it's another way it's safe for the most part i'm still thinking about that video it's ridiculous uh, the guy slipping. Yeah, I'm still thinking about it. That fool. Because, <laughs> dude, I was looking at it just a couple of days ago. I think I was editing. So, I don't know. I was looking at it. And I was crying of laughter. It was ridiculous. Um, what, yeah, the slipped? beach. That he slipped, or because he was lifting too much weight for his own good. Uh, it all, all of it. All of it just put together. <laughs> all of it. Yeah. It yeah. was good. But yeah, I think that I, I would second on the beach. Beach is great. That's actually like the best place to ground. Honestly, I mean, you want to talk about safety. The beach is, is top tier, no doubt. Uh, I forgot to talk about it, but there was a couple different shoe brands I wanted to mention because we were talking about shoes earlier and like putting on shoes when you do need to. Like you said, you're in the middle of New York, right? In the middle of the city. The last thing you need to do is be like your friend and be barefoot. Uh, you need to put some shoes on. And honestly, Liver King even mentions that in one of his old videos. I remember when he was popping he had a video of him walking around New York showing like all of uh, the the nine tenants of like Liver King, something like that. Nine but, tenants of being a primal. Yeah, something like that. And one of the tenants was grounding and um, he was talking about, yeah, you should ground, you should really c connect with the earth. But when you're in the middle of the city and he was in the middle of New York, there you're not going to take your shoes off. That's stupid. So what you need to do is touch a tree, right? So there's 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 some go hug a tree, yeah, yeah, hug trees, right? Perfect. You be a tree hugger, but there's some different methods to still connect with the earth, um, without taking off your shoes. But on the note of shoes, some brands that I know are good are you have the Zero shoes, so X E R O shoes. Those are just like minimalist shoes, yeah. and they're flat and they have a wide area for your foot to be in there so it's not squished up yeah the other one i knew of was vivo barefoot just another brand you have more room in the toe area which is, i think with a lot of these barefoot shoes like yes they're more flat they don't have that big sole on the bottom like those big hokas but uh these barefoot shoes you're more flat um on the ground and you have a lot more toe room area i think is like the biggest thing with these shoes Especially in the Vivo ones, I think. I don't have a pair. I really want to get a pair just to like wear to the gym. or. Those ones are pricier though, right? So those ones are more like $200. And I know the Zeros are more towards under $100. So if you want to talk about like, I'd say Zero, the more budget ones. Like I think I saw them for 60 bucks, And I know the Vivos go run up towards 200 But the Vivos are really slick and really nice. Yeah. And then yeah. you also have the sandals, right? So there's the grounding sandals. Yeah. And I know your roommate Preston has those and that has the copper um little part in the bottom and oh, that's supposed yeah, to yeah. basically help you like ground cuz it conducts electricity, right? I don't know, it's not as good I would say as walking barefoot, but it it's the idea, right? Yeah, you it's like a flat sandal and it has like the toe um like the toe ring, I don't know. You put your your your, your big toe and your second toe uh, it's like a flip flop, basically. Yeah, it's a flip flop. Just the bottom that actually connects the piece that connects it on the bottom to the actual sole in the strap is copper. Yeah, copper. That's a really cool concept. Yeah, so, so copper's touching your foot, and then copper's touching the ground. Thus, you're you're grounded. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, good brands out there. Um, I'm sure you could just Google uh, barefoot shoes, and a lot of brands will pop up. But yeah, there's all those like barefoot uh, shoes that actually are a glove around your toe as well. So 
barefoot has been popular i feel like like barefoot shoes have been popular for maybe five or so years now so there's tons of different brands yeah you guys can google whatever i think i want to pick up a pair of the zero shoes when i get some new shoes but so how many people in costa rica were wearing barefoot shoes oh not none of them they just had no shoes no shoes barefoot nobody was wearing those barefoot zeros or nothing see that's just some american thing that we do like, we want to be a barefoot, but we really can't. So you actually got to get zeros or something like this. If you go to Costa Rica, they're actually just genuinely barefoot, and there's no issues. Like, I, uh, we, did a, we had a surfing instructor, and we drove our four-wheeler down from our place. And that's down a hill, right? We got down to the parking lot where it said to meet, and we met him, and he's like, yeah, we're like 30 minutes down that way. He's like, so I'll meet you down there. So we drove our four-wheeler down there. And then we still had to walk a little bit. He walked the whole way from where we were barefoot down maybe two miles down the beach and just walked the whole way with a surfboard too. Wow. It was nuts. What what would you say the terrain was like the whole way? Like was I'm sure it wasn't like perfect terrain. No, he's not just on the perfect beach. He was going up into the jungle and then walking through and then walking on some branches, some rocks. And then we ended up getting meeting up with him and then i and then he inspired me to take off my shoes so i took them off and i was like okay i'm gonna try this and i was walking around trying my best i'm so slow compared to him the fire ants were biting me and he had to teach me how to stamp the fire ants out and you just you just stamp them and yeah that's something i really learned in costa rica because it was just super minimalist like they just wanted nothing besides the sun some good fruit and just a good time with people really is what it was. And then the best of health for everybody is what it seemed. So you can go into, in Costa Rica, you can go into a grocery store with no shoes. Oh, they wouldn't say anything. No. Uh, he walked in. I don't know if he walked in the grocery store. He had no shoes. I really do think he went in the grocery store with no shoes. I would bet. I will tell you, you can go into the grocery store with no shirt. They do not follow the no shirt, no service. That's not a rule at all. You get great service regardless whether the shirt's on or off. But the shoes, they're not going to say anything, no. I, they won't say anything, I'll tell you that. That's uh, I forgot. So that's a thing in the U.S., no shirt, no service? That's quite literally a rule. Like if you go into a... Sh- I mean, I've you heard of in- that, but I've always wore a shirt in stores. So I've never, I guess I've never really had to think about it. But I've heard the saying, but that's like a thing, though. Like Obviously, I don't, I don't see people with no shirts in the U.S. Why do you think Carnivore MD puts a shirt on when he's in the U.S. in the stores? He literally puts them on because yeah. I think he's gotten booted out. Yeah, Paul Saldino. Yeah, yeah I, th- he, I think he got booted out of some stores and stuff like that, and now he puts the shirt on when he's in the U.S. stores. But if he's back in Costa Rica, you'll always see his shirts off in the grocery store. Yeah, I mean, they just start barefoot and minimalist experience. And, yeah, I mean, they're really in touch with the earth. They are definitely connected with the earth. That's really all I have to say regarding that. I mean, they're, they have the sun always on them. Their shoes are always off. Out, they're always outside their houses and buildings are all like incorporated to be partly outside partially inside because the weather right it's always warm so you don't have to take account for the cold at all in michigan like that's not a thing like we have to have four walls and insulation in every building i get it gets nice in the summer doesn't matter but there they can incorporate life like that so it's really awesome to do and i will tell you i felt absolutely great all the time so the brain benefits were I, from personal experience not a lie yeah this, this dude came back from costa rica and was like i feel terrible dude yeah america was was oh it was terrible coming back i was so upset i came back and the first experience i had was some folgers coffee <laughs> and mcdonald's and it was game over i felt awful after that did you have trouble breathing <laughs> get back into the united states weather and you're just like oh, i can't breathe yeah we had the fog at the time where you couldn't see oh because yeah. we left for two weeks yeah, when all you, you guys had the great smog in 1952 going on in michigan yeah and and i was in costa rica in the beautiful sun yeah i the it, it, when you just connect like that and you just live such a minimalist life you just focus on the things that are actually important instead of focusing on just bs that we focus on here constantly focus on work the next buck something like that and tv tiktok whatever it is and there they focus on what matters like dude they focus like i said on good food good health connecting with the earth and like each other that's all it is that's all that matters like even i remember we woke up in the morning and there's construction going on across the street 
and all we heard was music blasting. They were having such a good time. It was crazy. They weren't even working. They were partying. And it was 8 a.m., 7 a.m. because the sunrise there, 5 a.m. They're out there working, and they're just all singing, having a grand old time. I was jealous. And that was construction workers. I was like, dude, I'm kind of jealous. Like, they're having a good time. I don't have that at work. That's just not a thing. That's not a thing in America. Nobody's having that good of a time at work. You're just you're just hoping Friday comes so you can not be at work and just f- and relax for once. AKA stare at your phone and uh yeah, I mean that's all I really got to say about Costa Rica, but so Costa Rica is quite literally the opposite of the United States. Yeah, I mean in most ways, yeah. I mean, I will say they they are hustlers as well. They do always hustle for a buck. Um so they they, they like money as well, um but it, it's definitely quite the opposite. There are some similarities. They have their own issues. Like, I saw a lot of pop consumption there. Coca-Cola marketing is literally giant in Latin America. Santa Cruz Medicinals talks about that. I really like those videos when he's highlighting the marketing done there. It's kind of crazy. But it, I will say, in general, their values are just opposite of ours. Yeah. People are just money-driven here and don't like each other, just want to isolate like little hermits and have no sort of sense of community and... It's all different. So, so I think the way to put it is they focus on the essential matters and we focus on the non-essential matters. Yeah. Or yes. I wouldn't say us, but most um, people. Yeah. Um, yeah. General, like, American society focuses on everything that, you know, the non-essential matters, and they really focus on what's truly essential, like, from birth. Not this, like, constructed, like, thing we have going on here this constructed society where we create like different important values and stuff like that like people are more you know think like social media is more important or whatever and there they don't have that constructed like society what's just important is like what's important from when you come out the womb right and what's naturally important and has always been important through all life and that's what people need to really get back to is their roots right just getting back to your roots and walking barefoot is one of those things you can do just to get back to your roots. It's just one little thing you can do out of a host of many things to just keep things more simple, focus on the essential things. And that's kind of what this podcast is going to be. And we'll, you know, we'll do more. We'll go through all different topics, barefoot. We did cold plunge, sauna, exercising, and all different types of exercising, whether that's running, lifting, stretching. We talked about toe yoga. So we can do meditation, breathing, stuff like that. And then all this stuff with food. And we can yeah. touch up on all that and the exact type of meats you want to get into. Stay tuned. There's a lot more to come.